I think the best way to do that is for the voters to weigh in, individuals to weigh in and say, we expect you to get to the table to negotiate they this. they did that. They elected the Republicans have a majority in the House and a majority <laughs> yes. in the Senate, and y'all aren't doing anything. Now, to your credit, <laughs> the Republicans in the House did at least move a health care reform yes, bill. Yes, they did. You did at least move that, that somehow the Republicans in the House, with, with all their disparate ideas, did something that the senators couldn't. But with regard to tax reform, yeah. what is the biggest stumbling block? Mm -hmm. Is the border adjustment tax off the table? Do we know, can we get past that and say we're not going to we're not yeah. going to use that? Is that is that off the table? What is the biggest stumbling block? Uh, Dagan, I do think the border adjustment tax is off the table. The reason for that is you have to say what is the value added there, and uh, nobody can seem to give a definitive answer mm -hmm. on a value added. Uh, when it comes to tax, timing is part of the process, making certain that a budget is there so tax mm -hmm. can go through on reconciliation. I agree with what many have said. Let's look at the way this was approached when Reagan did his tax reform and did it on a bipartisan basis. That is going to be important. The Democrats many times are not wanting to work on anything. Now, as far as productivity in the House, yes, we passed over 300 bills out of the House and we want the Senate to catch up with us. I think they've done about 120 bills and it's important for them to begin to take action. Some of these rules, regulations, bills we're passing that deal with efficiencies that are embedded in the economy, rolling back regulations, those things need to get across the finish line and I will say on some of those smaller measures, yes, we have seen bipartisan support on the big measures, health care tax reform. So far, we're not seeing that bipartisan support. And this is where constituents need to be weighing in with their elected representatives. You're already running for next year, Congressman. That's what, the way that it sounds, is that you're asking voters to go out there and vote the Democrats out next year, when in no. fact, it, it, when in fact if, you, if the Republicans don't get something done, all of your jobs are on I, the line. I agree with you on that. But constituents weighing in with those congressional offices and saying, I would like to see something get done. You, those offices pay attention to that. <laughs> and if members are hearing from their constituents that they want them to come to the table and work for the good of the country, that has a bearing. And at this point, when you have some who are saying we're not going to come to the table, I think hearing from their constituents that there is an expectation that for the good of the country, you're going to get this done. Look at what just lowering the marginal rates would do. If people could go back and reset their withholding, uh, what is coming out of their paychecks, increase that take-home pay, just being able to do that because all of our tax reform will be retroactive to January 1 yeah. of 2017. Yeah, but you that know what? You're talking about cutting taxes on individual rates, which is, of course, what everybody wants you to do. Uh, but then you've got some people in, in the caucus that say, well, if you're going to cut taxes that much, we need revenue somewhere, right? I mean, Speaker Ryan did not mention that border adjustment tax at all yesterday, even though, of course, we know he championed it in the past. But Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan had real opinions about this yesterday. He joined us yesterday, Congressman. I want you to hear what he had to say about this whole fight on taxes. It doesn't sound like it's going to be easy. Here's Jim Jordan. This idea that it's going to be revenue neutral, uh, we're opposed to that. Many of us conservatives, we think that's just a fancy way of saying that the tax burden stays the same. We're all for tax reform and lowering the tax burden on families and creating a tax code that's conducive to economic growth. But we don't want this border adjustment tax, which is a whole new tax put on the American economy. We don't want that in the plan. So show us the plan, then we'll pass the budget uh, if we're actually achieving the savings we need to and putting together the right kind of tax plan. Well, mm. Not on the same page, huh, Congressman? <laughs> well, I, I think that what you're doing is working out some of those finishing details. Revenue neutral. People want uh, tax reform to be a net positive, not only to their personal economy, but to the nation's economy. And as Mick Mulvaney said yesterday, sometimes you're going to see that the deficit will tick up or the CBO's estimates 
on the deficit are going to tick up because you're going to lead to growth in revenue and economic growth. It'd be great to have a GDP growth at 3.5 percent. Congressman, and then that yeah. is going to give you more revenues. And, you know, CBO gets these numbers wrong a lot of times, and you all know how they do. They don't utilize the dynamic scoring, and they don't take into consideration that a change in policy is going to lead to a change in action, which leads to a change in revenue.